मंडला मध्य प्रदेश में कुरैशी समुदाय के 11 परिवारों के घर उनके फ्रिज में गौमांस होने के शक में 24 घंटे के अंदर अंदर गिरा दिया जाता है कोई फोरेंसिक जांच नहीं कोई सुनवाई नहीं कोई संवैधानिक तरीका नहीं गुजरात में एक मुस्लिम महिला को सरकारी आवास मिल गया तो पूरा मोहल्ला सड़क पे आ गया कि हिंदू एरिया में मुसलमान की एंट्री नहीं छत्तीसगढ़ में तीन मुसलमान युवकों को गौ तस्करी के आरोप में आप ही की पार्टी के गौ रक्षकों ने मार डाला और फिर उनकी गिरफ्तारी के बाद आप ही के कार्यकर्ता और नेता इंसान के हत्यारों के लिए इंसाफ की मांग कर धरना दे रहे हैं अलीगढ़ में मोहम्मद फरीद को चोरी के इल्जाम में सरेआम मार मार कर मार डाला लखनऊ के अकबर नगर में रिवर फ्रंट बनाने के लिए 1900 परिवारों के घर उजाड़ दिए गए हिमाचल प्रदेश में जावेद की दुकान पुलिस की मौजूदगी में और जय श्री राम के नारों के बीच लोगों ने तोड़ डाली और व्हाट्सएप पर ईद के मौके पर दी गई कुर्बानी की फोटो डालने के जुर्म में जावेद गिरफ्तार हुआ उसकी दुकान तोड़ने वाले लोग नहीं आपको पता है नही सर Hello everyone. This is Venkat. I'm part of Edina, and Edina is a community media house based out of Karnataka and Bangalore. We're looking to aggregate community voices, and what we mean by it is, uh, we have many community citizen people, journalists who then give us news, and we try to aggregate it through our media house. We also do surveys through which we try to understand what might be happening. Uh, although we are more popular for the exit polls, but we do surveys as a way to understand what people are uh, looking to and what are people's problems are. Uh, we also want to say we're an independent media house. Uh, we would like to take this opportunity to say, ask people to support us, both uh, like, subscribe, but also financially. We'd also say, please do that to other independent journalists because uh, they have done a great job. The influencers and the independent journalists. I would club them all. There's non-corporate, non-corporate journalists and influencers who have actually gone and done a fabulous job during this election. Uh, before I introduce uh, our our guest, I want to say that very recently Ravi said. uh that the journalism especially the corporate journalism or godi journalism has done not only harm for the democracy but to humanity uh somehow we have lost the sense of uh, decency and when we talk about decency uh, one must think a lot about words and language and how we are using it uh, and how even prime minister can use words like muslim uh, mujra etc in public audience and and that has given a, a world of indecency that can perhaps be measured in language and grammar and our guest um uh things uh, we feel we'll talk about a little bit more spends a lot of time thinking about the words and the language we use and through a uh, mechanism of satire she reaches out to us uh, many formats one format is dukh darshan one format is where she is uh, the neighborhood teacher and one which is very popular where she's been do share me where she uses a format of a troll helpline where she gives suggestions to possibly trolls and i don't know if some of the trolls are really using them actually uh, to come out with uh, with that and and in each of these formats i we feel they she uses words satire to bring it out we also want to tell dr medusa that in edina we are sometimes think that can we create a script very similar to how she writes but we are not as crafty as she is in her language so we want to say that we are a big fan of what she does uh, we also want to think they think that she is very brave in the way she brings about we also want to take this opportunity to talk about what she spoke today which was not a satire which was a direct appeal to prime minister modi uh, so dr medusa we are uh, warmly welcome you to edina thank you so much thank you so much. that was that was too much too much of a appreciation and i am i i get very uncomfortable <laughs> when uh, when people appreciate me uh, or praise me to mujhe thoda sa wo i i just really want to you know shrink down when that happens although although i must i must say that i kind of like it as well but again <laughs> uh yeah. thank you so much thank you for your words uh so uh, maybe because uh, you spoke today uh, very specifically appealing uh, on a day when the lok sabha speaker was uh, seeing really no no mp has spoken much maybe a little bit of sendil spoke it just after taking the oath we have not seen anybody talking about how the hate has not stopped although the mm-hmm. elections to indicate that india does not want that want to speak on real issues mm-hmm. uh can we just go and just immediately first talk about what you said today what was your message and where did that come from uh i uh, the message in fact um it came from um it came from 
first of all whatever i make or whatever i create all of that is in a very it's an it's a very contemporary form of uh, work right uh, because my my stuff the things or the videos or the formats of the scripts all of that is very contextual it has it is placed in a certain context and if for example if the week is over then probably it might be a it might be a little difficult for you to understand the context of the satire which uh, was written because of course the, the time is gone and the the event has passed from your memories uh having said that what i wrote today um for the past few days in fact for the past 15 days ever since the second the third gov the, this particular government has assumed power uh what we believed or what we thought uh that there will be a little it, they will be a little cautious using the same methodologies of hatred and the same methodologies of communalism that they have used in the past decade we thought that that would happen we thought that now we have a stronger opposition it won't be so easy for uh, the people in power especially the bjp government uh, to you know pass off atrocities and discrimination and things like demolition of houses and bulldozer justice uh, so easily but in the past 15 days uh, people like me who have had a lot of hope lot of hope from a stronger opposition they have kind of you know been because we have been very impatient to see uh, this particular government be brought uh, to the people's court this particular government to be you know uh, held answerable and accountable we have been very desperate for that uh, so when now we have the chance and we have the numbers not exactly big numbers but still good numbers to raise certain issues in the parliament to raise certain issues uh, in the public Uh, eyes in the public uh, court of justice in the public court of uh, you know narrative making and etc we are still not doing that and right now because of that reason there has been a lot of talk on social media on and off social media uh, uh, asking rahul gandhi to speak up about the atrocities especially the atrocities which are happening in himachal pradesh like the the incidents which i mentioned right mandla in madhya pradesh chatisgarh the mob lynching in chatisgarh uh, the one which happened in aligarh akbar nagar's houses the demolition of the houses then there was uh, mandla made the demolition of the 11 houses so we have been wanting to speak we have been wanting rahul gandhi to speak on these things because frankly speaking and very openly there were many of us many of us creators many influencers many people who had openly taken the side of rahul gandhi during the elections uh, the lok sabha elections in 2024 right so right now we are kind of feeling betrayed and because of that reason there was a lot of you know discussion on twitter however i thought that yeah i i wanted to make a video i wanted to make an appeal towards rahul gandhi and asking him to talk about these things asking him to speak up but then i thought you know the first questions that i still need to ask is to the prime minister because that is the person who ha who has been in entrusted with the responsibility to fix things he is the one so i cannot straight away go and ask the uh, leader of the opposition to speak up or the leader that we have faith in to i have faith in to uh, speak on certain topics without shooting my shot with the prime minister and saying ki pehle aap bolo so i wanted to make i wanted to at least get that out of my way because when i uh, want to appeal to rahul gandhi i want to be able to say that this man is going to do nothing this man of course he has not done anything in the past 10 years but still ek wo it it the I'm I'm sorry I sometimes use uh, hindi phrases in the middle is yes, that okay absolutely, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. because it's like you know code switching have it <laughs> so I, I just wanted to make sure that you know it's a it's a language that you understand anyway uh, so yeah um so i before you know before i before i make a video before i want a uh, launch a mass appeal before i talk to my creator friends and you know have a push towards or create a push towards uh, the opposition parties or the leaders of the opposition parties all the opposition parties currently uh, to speak on these particular matters i need to make sure that i have done my job and my duty because right now the prime minister is clearly not doing his job and his duty but at least i should do my duty as a citizen i need to make him aware and i need to make him understand at least from my part there was a purely again purely selfish uh, yeah um exercise that i wanted to make sure that i have said this i have made this video asking the prime minister first to get his act in order get his house in order get his uh, people in order and then once that is done once he has of course done nothing again 
then I can move on to the next uh, phase of making these videos. Yes. So that is exactly that is exactly where this video came from because the atrocities are continuing, the, the discrimination is still going on, uh, the the common Muslim uh, person or the common Muslim human being in this country is you know they're still living in a in a, in an atmosphere of fear, constant fear. So that is still there. It hasn't changed in the past fifteen uh, days. So yeah. And I wanted to say that I've been a part of a few civil movements which have been working towards the election. Uh, mm -hmm. Civil societies don't usually work there, but this time everybody worked. In that place, the role of the Muslim community has been exemplary. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pay for that, but the role they played in through, mm -hmm. uh, through communication, through working with their team and working in a very secular way and bringing the constitution forward. Right. And in, if anything, if Rahul Gandhi is holding that book, uh, it first mm -hmm. came out in India again uh, during the CA protest, right? Mm -hmm. and the flag and the constitution was uh, was brought back into secular discussion through the Muslim community, exactly. Uh, and not uh, being not going back to what they have done uh, to mm -hmm. help us, uh, you know, protect the democracy and not speak mm -hmm. for them seems like a betrayal. So I. I kind of agree. As absolutely, it does. In fact, it not just uh, not just in in not just not just in the in the matter of symbolic uh, or symbols, but electorally also, the Muslim community has behaved extremely secularly. And in fact, one of my friends says that the Muslim voter has always been the secular voter because they have always voted for uh, for a secular country, for a country where the where religions where you know um, the the values of the constitution are upheld. So I I absolutely loved the analysis. When he had given me uh, in that way because if the Muslim voter voted only on the basis of religion then we would have had more uh, Muslim MPs and more Muslim leaders but that is not the case it's not the case the Muslim voter electorally also is a secular voter so yes. that 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 has to be appreciated and I absolutely know this from experience that many people mm -hmm. were put in to uh, to split votes Muslim mm -hmm. went and spoke to them and mm -hmm. spoke to them saying that this is not the time for it. This Correct. kind of strategic but thinking for the mm. system and the society. So I completely agree with you that this is a betrayal. And thank you so yeah. much for uploading uh, the stuff which you did. I wanted to take a little step back. Uh, actually, TM Krishna said there is a place where relief to realization. Relief is the election, mm -hmm. the realization. It depends on what trajectory we should take. He said, mm. my trajectory of realization has come on the second day of the election itself. Mm. So if we are all going through that trajectory. Yeah, trajectory of realization. Uh, the relief to realization. I hope the politicians can move into that very quickly. In that yeah. regard, I want to go to that relief zone a little bit and come back to more discussions. Is that you uh, uh, You have a good idea about UP because I think you, you are there and also Sam. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. did you read the elections from these two slightly different states? and especially UP itself, what changed and what worked and what did not or what is your view about it? Um, I think in UP, uh, there was a huge, you know, uh, this is this is this is not on record or it's not something which is uh, advertised or which is very, uh, you know, accepted or I don't know if it, if it is if the source is um, believable in this, but but in UP, there is this understanding or at least it, or it might be also that I am hearing these things because I am in that kind of an echo chamber. So I don't know. But again, I'll put this out that uh, in UP, there is a there is a very strong uh, understanding or a very strong belief that Yogi Ji and Modi Ji do not see eye to eye. OK. And because of that reason, uh, uh, for some uh, the, the way uh, Yogi was treated during the elections in, in rallies, etc. Apparently, that was not very liked. One of the reasons cited is that. The other one is uh, that the, you know, there is, there is, you know, there is this thing in Hindi called Kaat ki handi eki, but a bar bar nature like a wooden pot. You cannot cook on a, in a wooden pot again and again, right? Because it is going to burn down eventually. So I think I would like to give the people of UP that benefit of the doubt that uh, the Hindu Muslim diatribe did not kind of work uh, in the, um, in UP this time. And also this, there was a very palpable and very present fear about the constitu constitution being tampered with, about the constitution being changed, especially uh, the reservation uh, or the, the, or the, uh, the provision of reservation being taken away from the uh, Dalits and OBC communities. So that I think these things worked. 
and um, that's the reason why up kind of voted up kind of surprised everyone <laughs> so it's a happy surprise of course i'm very thankful to the people of up for whatever reason they have uh, they have voted but this is kind of my um, flawed understanding okay yeah I, i must say that i i got reminded of my teacher who is the hindi teacher i grew up in calcutta uh -huh. and my hindi teacher had once said to us uh, in discussion i didn't take it very uh, importantly because i was a mm -hmm. kid there he told me ki hamara desh do ram se bana hai gun uh -huh. sa, uh, nirgun aur sagun dono to mm -hmm. ye ram bhi hai kabir ke ram bhi hai uh -huh. so aap ek ram se hi nahi jeet sakte He was saying this oh. when the Ram Mandir was happening, and I mm. felt like if I was he was around, I would have given him a call. Uh, I felt like yeah. maybe the Nirgun Ram. Of course, you sometimes intellectualize, yeah. happy about these things. It may these not be the, right. Like this may be the relief and not the realization part yeah. of that too. Uh, so I wanted to take a part which you uh, which you analyze with the with Meghnaand, and you did a uh, did a. a reaction video and i thought there were some more things i wanted to know about the ani interview uh, which was mm -hmm. at some sense farcical and weird and strange where you had the the right wing uh, media house sitting there and talking mm -hmm. in a strange way where it, one place it was nearly assumed that soros was funding all of it as if it's a oh, the podcast not the interview the podcast, the podcast. Oh, sorry, the podcast. Ah, okay okay yeah 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 so, because the interview was with only uh, smita prakash Uh, correct smita but but smita yeah. with that podcast but was, now it's a podcast ah, yeah got it got yes. it yeah and then there was this uh, strange so dance was funding uh, <laughs> fire and it was very strange on one hand very, it was very. laughable and very funny mm -hmm. and strange as if it's melted down but it was also worrying to me at some sense i wanted mm -hmm. to know your two views one of course uh, that there, there is a need to react and mm -hmm. I, you know say this is a meltdown but there was also mm -hmm. some worrying signs i thought because it was being played around as if the 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 sort of thing like we'll get back to this because we were not that organized uh, mm -hmm. sort of thing was coming out i wanted your view the the satirical view and also did you worry about what was happening or did you just think it's a meltdown uh no no i to think it's i still think it's a meltdown and then they were very they you know because they are very intellectual and very well worded and very well uh, you know they have this huge team of people to you know edit their stuff and they have a setup and a studio and everything so it does not seem as much of a meltdown because of all of these reasons but uh, of course uh, they are worried they were worried and what i liked more about the interview or about the podcast was that certain certain things were very very clear for example uh, when ranganathan was talking about uh, strategizing and once i think it was in another interview uh, another interview where he had talked about uh, how uh, how the bjp or certain members oh no no um, how uh, ajit pawar uh, how the bjp had taken in ajit pawar and at one point of time they were saying that ajit pawar is so corrupt and so corrupt and now suddenly ajit pawar is a member of uh, the bjp and all his corruption charges are, are gone and ranganathan was talking about this and he was talking about this in a form as if he's saying that it is a wrong decision strategically taking ajit pawar is a wrong decision strategically so the what worries me is the people's their realization or their 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 uh, knowledge or their acknowledgement of the fact that they know what these guys are doing is wrong but they don't see it as wrong as something which is morally wrong but only strategically wrong so if so that is something which i think uh, which i think is worrisome because you know to for for people like them for people who are so glib who have the the power of language the power of you know turning a phrase for people like them to have this power and this understanding that um, all of this all of this uh, for, so this all of this boils down for them all of this boils down to just power or retaining power that is what is worrisome and it was it was evident in all of their i don't remember what everyone said uh in the podcast because abhi bahut din ho gaye dekhe but uh, this was very clearly i at that point of time i remember feeling this that these guys don't care uh don't care where or on what reasons or, or on what ideology elections are fought they just care about them and their coterie retaining power and that is what is extremely dangerous all everything else is like a smoke screen yeah i I don't know if it was the same one. I was worried about his reaction on Kashmir, 
and I thought that was very worrying. Oh, oh yeah. my God! Yes, yes, yes. In fact, that is the reason why he blocked me. You know that. Oh, <laughs> like an yeah, because uh, when he talked about Kashmir and uh, yeah, uh, an Israel-like situation in Kashmir or Israel-like solution in Kashmir, I was extremely upset. I was so angry. You you should have seen me that day. I was like out of my mind. But I controlled myself, and I then uh, wrote to him that okay, fine. Since you speak about an Israel-like solution in Kashmir, I would like to ask you. I just need some clarification, so I just want to ask you a few questions. The first question is: Israel is the occupier state in um, uh, is the occupier occupying power in in Palestine, right? Are you saying when you so when you talk about an Israel-like solution, are you saying that India is the occupying power in Kashmir? Are you saying India has occupied Kashmir? Number one, number two. If you are asking for, or if you are saying that is India is not uh, the occupying pa pa force, in fact, Pakistan is the occupying force. Are you saying that Indian citizens should be eliminated, or the, a genocide genocide should be committed against the Indian people, against Indian citizens by a foreign state, by a foreign power? Just explain these two things to me, because this is this is what your idea of an Israeli-like solution talks about he blocked me he wrote some very bizarre answer about how he's talking about the rehabilitation of victims and and the protection of people and the elimination of a terrorist uh, organization etc and not about uh, you know the genocide like preventing he said it, an israel like solution is about preventing a genocide and not creating a genocide or like or causing uh, a genocide like whatever yeah. that man is that man is pure pure hatred pure evil yeah, pure. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to take one more step back and talk yeah. a little bit about your craft. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, I, I love the fact that uh, how you use words. Uh, the other person I really appreciate is how Ravish has turned his uh, from an NDTV to when he has come. I met him. He mm -hmm. writes in a single day, like, like one yeah. video that he writes three or four drafts. He did three mm -hmm. drafts during, mm -hmm. during the election. I think he concentrates a lot on the craft. Sometimes mm -hmm. we think about the influencer uh, or sometimes we think about the media person as a person who has just a brave heart but i also think that there's a lot of craft in it i want to take uh, you. your time to uh, and to, for us to understand uh, what is this craft for you because i feel that you use words language mm -hmm. even when you spoke to anand ragnathan you use the words and turn the table around yes so can you also talk a little bit about it, uh, it uh, e even if it means praising yourself a little bit <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what? Uh, that's the thing. Um, I have been extremely privileged when it comes to uh, language, when it comes to what you call the craft, right? My father uh, is a writer. He has been, he's a national award winning writer. My mother has been a professor of English literature. And my house, my home, if I show you my father's library right now, it, there's an entire room full of uh, books from the like top to bottom. It's everywhere. So I have always been surrounded with with literature, with text, with poetry, with discussions about these things. Uh, so it kind of has, it kind of has been um, my environment, the environment in which I grew up in, right? Uh, then I also decided to do an, a, a BA, a bachelor's in English literature, and then I went on to do linguistics. So basically I have been, this is, this has been, I have been doing this ever since I was, you know, a child, a, a kid, uh, using language or using, um, words in a way which which can get your point across in a more effective way than using anything anything else so i think i have been very privileged in that way so as to have so as to not to have to worry about um worry about the craft so if you see if you sometimes see the sometimes sometimes my scripts are extremely sharp extremely evocative extremely you know um not not rich or laden with vocabulary but with sense like i'm able to i am able to portray or i'm able to convey a uh, much more sense or much more layered meanings in certain scripts and in certain scripts uh, certain scripts are not very you know uh, not very good not very strong and that is because unfortunately i would love i would love to do what ravish does you know hone the craft and he himself is like so good with his words for me or my work currently, at least currently, it, it started from a position or started from a point of rage and it still comes from a point of rage. I create when I'm extremely angry. 
so when you see like a couple of my videos if i'm if i'm creating more for example if there are more than four videos in a week or more than four videos in a uh, more than five videos in a week you have to understand that there is something which is happening something which is going on she is not well she is not she is extremely angry so my work comes purely from a point of uh, from a place of rage and sometimes i'm able to you know mold my language in a way that can show the angrier i am the better my work is <laughs> yes <laughs> the okay. better my words are so that happens so unfortunately i cannot really tell you how i write certain things or why i write certain things because it just happens and it's just something which is framed in my mind it just it, it just it just comes out it just pours out it there's no there's no some there of course there is sometimes there is thought behind a certain the the uh, phrase or a certain usage of a particular word which i think can cause can create a little bit of difference but basically all of it mostly comes from a point of rage <laughs> so okay. craft wise i am not very helpful or i am not very good in answering this question but uh, this is where this is that's the truth actually <laughs> on a lighter note so are you the yeah. are you the john wick with the dictionary not the knife <laughs> <laughs> prob i i love that i love that that is wonderful okay so, yeah, that is wonderful. john wick with the dictionary i think, lexicon, right? I, think. I, uh, <laughs> i would like to that I, that should be on my twitter bio <laughs> <laughs> okay thank john you john wick with the dictionary <laughs> oh god I wanted to ask also from that rage uh, stuff I, i i i you know one of the interviews which i loved during this whole thing was karan thapa's interview of dhruv rathi uh, uh -huh. something uh, I, i don't know whether he agree i hope i don't know if he sees and he gets angry if i see this there was a near pro man there and he can, mm -hmm. he's very sharp with his questions he he doesn't like things going away but with mm -hmm. dhruv he was asking things about his his love life and things like that i was thinking where is karan going there but there was also a uh, Uh, I mean, I'm melodramatically saying it looked like a bait and passing over of some form, and I've seen this happening in a very organic way. People mm. have collaborated. I know that you collaborate with a lot of them, mm -hmm. uh, and people have been collaborating with them in a very organic way. And I must mm -hmm. say that it was mentioned when Ravish had visited Bangalore that this has to happen in an organic way. The mm. the orchestration on the other side is inorganic. We have to mm -hmm. do it organically. Then only it will work. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I felt like a lot of the solidarity among the influencers media house mm -hmm. people is very organic i met yeah. nidhi vyas she talk, spoke about how people work together help mm -hmm. out and i saw ajit anjum's video for ravi shastri cross mm -hmm. um, that number cut a cake mm -hmm. for him and that was fascinating to see yeah. you know a competitor right like but still doing that i wanted to ask you what is that and what does it mean for us in terms of democracy or should we read too much about it and i see this sort of solidarity among you all of you i wanted you to talk a little bit uh, i think it's wonderful and 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 it has personally happened to me as well uh when i started uh, creating when i started making i in fact i have been making videos for the past 4 years now i started in uh, during covid uh after that uh it was almost a year um no it was almost two years in fact uh, because my videos started going viral in 2022 it was almost two years um i kept doing this because it was a very personal and very uh, cathartic exercise for myself i wanted to be able to speak out i wanted to be able to talk about certain certain things and i wanted to preserve myself i did not want to you know invite police action or i didn't want to lose my job over it so i that's why i chose the path of satire and i started doing this in in that particular way and i had to do it because otherwise i would have literally gone mad i had it had i not had a a creative outlet for the kind of rage i was feeling at during that during that particular time okay so i started doing that and in 2022 i was when i was when i was first noticed uh, there were people like ravish there were people like pushottam agarwal people like uh, om thanvi sir all of these people without they have never met me they have never seen my work they have never i have nothing to gain for them from them they have nothing to gain from me and in fact i have everything to gain from them because they are like you know uh, uh, stalwarts in the in their own fields but they had nothing to gain from me and yet all of them shared my work appreciated it people sent sent my work to other people i have i know for a fact that you know people um, that uh, ravish ji spoke about me in um, uh, to some of my friends who are now my friends uh, so uh, not just that not just these big not journalists and etc but then politicians also like the, the reason for politicians to follow me is 
probably might be a little bit of a di- little bit different but at least these people who are you know journalists and who have worked uh who have a very strong work ethic who have had a history of you know standing up against the establishment for a long long period of time all of these people they started appreciating me this is like you know my personal experience uh during this election also almost all of them um, i have i have collaborated on my videos whenever people are you know usually they ask me for my permission ki aapka video laga de i'm like listen my work is for everyone do whatever you want you copy my style you copy my uh, content you copy take my videos put it up on your website put it up on your channel it gets a million views you get go viral you go um, you uh, g- gather a, a million subscribers i have no issue my only my only prob- my only thing or my only agenda is for the word to get out that's all that's all i want and that's all i need and that kind of you know that that kind of feeling i felt it resonated within the creators or within uh, this larger community this time and it was a very very welcome thing and it was a very uh, happy thing in fact all of us were sharing each other's work without anyone having uh, to be told so there was there were certain times in which i corrected a few of my um, you know uh, fellow creators uh, about certain nuances when it comes to talking about caste or when it comes to talk about philistine or gaza uh, you, i corrected a few nuances and they accepted it without any issue they, they changed their um, the scripts of their videos they changed their they, sometimes they even deleted the videos so all of these things have been happening and i think it's an extremely positive thing to happen especially considering that the internet is such a negative sometimes it can be a very very negative space uh, so that has been happening and i think it's a it's a good um indication democratically democratically or or thinking about democratic traditions it's a good indication that something like that is happening and if we are able to continue this uh um in 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 the in on this side of the of the wall i think it will be a better it will be a better place and then people will soon start realizing um that uh, what, what is the better place to be in what is the better place to go to Yeah okay yeah Lily thank you for that and there's one last question which i want to talk about is that uh, there is there was this belief and i i think even i am perhaps a victim of this the role of a citizen is just the voting part right yeah. um, but now we we have told ourselves and i think we have realized that it's beyond that it's mm. solidarity it is talking about issues it's not a journey from one vote to the other there's a lot mm. of rules to play in between and democracy will be defined by this um mm. this part so uh, as an influencer and as a person who who t- takes a lot of like care to see what's happening around uh, uh the relief to realization part is happening what do you think is the sort of things which we must work on uh, what are the things which you would like us to work together uh, media mm. houses individual voters uh, why we shouldn't drop the ball if i could say huh i think uh, huh because you know if we should not really extend the period of relief to such a level uh, like you said that we drop the ball uh, so this this has to go on this has to this this fight has to continue because this is something which i feared before as well and i've talked about this before also because this one time uh, do you remember when the junaid and nasir wala case happened uh, in rajasthan when they were lynched and rajasthan had an ashok gehlot congress ki sarkar at that point of time and they were protesting they were protesting near the family nasir and junaid's family they were protesting near their dead bodies asking the government to you know uh, take action against the people who had uh, lynched them and the government had given them uh, i think there was a 5 lakh or 25 lakh something some kind of a compensation the compensation amount was good the compensation amount was big but then the point is that is not enough and first of all The, the i think that fear or that reluctance to you know use even use the word muslim because even today i think rahul gandhi talk kept talking about minority and minority and not muslim because uh, frankly speaking yes all minorities of our country are being victimized all minor, minorities are being uh, uh, are being discriminated against dalit obcs and scsts they have been discriminated against for like probably thousands of years now uh, all of that is happening yes but currently the the very real and the very present and the very contemporary sword is dangling over the heads of the muslims so you cannot 
you cannot shy away or you cannot wish away this problem it has to be talked about it has to be spoken about it has to be raised in the parliament it has to be raised by the leaders that we have chosen to do this job and in order to ensure that this has to continue the pressure uh, because previously you know i was of the opinion or i was i had i i used to say that there is no point in in asking rahul gandhi to talk about certain things or there's no point in questioning rahul gandhi about certain events because frankly speaking he has no power he is he is in no position before this particular election right before in the last term he is in no position he is he's not even the leader of the opposition so there is no reason to ask him that question fortunately or unfortunately that's not the case anymore he currently does have he is he currently is the leader of the opposition and now it it will be legitimate for us to create that pressure on our representatives to keep asking these questions because yes the the prime minister belongs to the entire country the prime minister is even though i may have not i may have not voted for him he is still my representative uh, so the the responsibility of my of the responsibility of asking the questions to my representatives still lays on me and i have to keep continue doing that and independent media houses like yours uh, like others we have to you know be in active collaboration with each other um to to make this happen um yeah yeah that's what i want to say yeah thank you thank you so much it helps and i want to say that there are many people who i, I know couple of friends who did not come vocally uh, but they went on to support some of the students muslim students who had lost uh, could not give the exam during the hijab yeah. issue uh, mm -hmm. and they were rattled and they for it i i feel that maybe this will also give them an opportunity to voice their opinion that mm -hmm. this is happening this is happening in front of us this is mm -hmm. not one incident there is a pattern to it there is an orchestration mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. cannot deny this we couldn't yeah. deny this any time uh, yeah. but, but we, we there is no reason for us to keep ourselves and create that pressure so i completely mm -hmm. agree the people uh, people's movement influencers mm -hmm. media we must create the pressure opposition mm -hmm. is enough power to at mm -hmm. least raise his voice and and if nothing else you know archive that dissent right like uh, yeah exactly exactly i may use this phrase i may use this phrase somewhere archiving that dissent yes yes, yes. that's so, important it's important because it has to be noted somewhere it has to be noted somewhere it has to be understood somewhere that the when this was happening there was a faction of the country which was talking about these things um for example just today itself i was having a conversation with my brother he is a very staunch rahul gandhi supporter and uh, when i was saying that i will i will be creating a video i will be making a video appealing to him directly uh, to talk about these certain issues and he's like no this is not the time to do this uh, because rahul gandhi uh, does everything very in a very planned manner it's a very he's very intelligent about these things so i don't think it's time for you to talk about these things i'm like you and i we do not belong to a community that is hounded and persecuted every single day we do not belong to the community jiske ghar pe like people would just barge into their homes open their fridge check whatever is there uh, accuse you of having a particular meat in your fridge fridge kill you take destroy your home loot your home you know uh, disrespect uh, your religious faith and re your religious artifacts or whatever and 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 just leave we do not we do not belong to this community so it's very easy for us to say that it is not the time or to think about political acu equity or pol political you know what do you call it mm, politeness at this point of time if we don't we don't belong to this uh, uh, community that so so that's the thing for for the community which is actually suffering for the muslims who are actually suffering they don't have time it is it's happening to them in real time it is happening to them right now tomorrow because i am a dissenter because i speak against the government tomorrow some things may happen to me as well but that future is still in the future but for the muslim community is happening right now so i frankly speaking don't care about timing i frankly speaking don't care about political politeness absolutely not it is important to speak about these things right now and as a mem as member as representatives who have been chosen by me i will ask for the accountability of my vote i will do that yes yes and uh, th there is this lovely uh, comment from akbar which amartya sen uses saying rahe aql honi chahiye uh, when i read it and when things were going wrong it is a friend with whom i was discussing i felt that the rage must also not and thinking must not always come from aql it must come from mohabbat so rahe mohabbat is a far Absolutely. more important way for us and this rage that feeling that our co citizen 
is facing the heat and not to speak yeah. about it is absolutely you know it's not their color tactics or strategy yeah yeah, yeah i don't care exactly. about tactics uh, I don't, sometimes sometimes i just think like for example uh, in in the video itself in the in the video i today posted itself there was a talk about how rahul gandhi should be speaking up and then somebody had commented and tagged rahul gandhi and then uh, this person who probably is a congress voter or a congress supporter he comes in and says that this is going to be political suicide if he talks about muslims at this point of time uh, so so i think that uh, might as well might as well like who who is stop like you might as well do this you might as well commit this so called political suicide and find out what happens because you know just thinking that it is going to be harmful it is going like strategizing behind it there is a there is an entire community which does not have the time like you know i think i remember uh, james baldwin uh, and baldwin has a has a has a has an interview where he talks about time and where he talks about how because the interview the white interviewer is, is clear, clearly saying uh that you know these things take time and uh, you know things have been different there was at one point of time uh, a, the, a black person would only be seen as a slave but it's not so anymore it is going to take some time and bolman says that it has taken my father's time my mother's time my brother's time my sister's time my grandfather's time it has taken all of these people's time so how much time do you want me to give what is it you want me to reconcile myself to i was born here almost 60 years ago i'm not going to live another 60 years You always told me it takes time. It has taken my father's time, my mother's time, my uncle's time, my brother's and my sister's time, my nieces and my nephews' time. How much time do you want for your progress? So that's the thing. It is for current for the current person for the current Muslim community. It is taking it is taking their father's time. It is taking their sister's time. It is taking their children's time as well. So how much how much more time do we need to give uh, before you know? it things come to an uh, come to a like catastrophic uh, point so there is no time there is no time it has to be spoken about now yeah uh, thank you so much it's very reflective very nice very wonderful to talk to you again from edina platform we would like to really thank you for coming over and talking thank to us thank you so much thank uh, you we are, we are a fan of yours although you think that <laughs> too much of praise but we love the way you speak and talk about it Uh, so to all the edina supporters thank you again please do support independent influencers non corporate media houses yeah. financially and also through like subscribe so we would like to say that mattashtu vishesha video galannu nodalu mattu hosa video gala bagge tiliyalu edina.com youtube channel subscribe maadi mattu bell icon click maadi